Coming up ahead in this episode of X Talk Spotlight. Really key elements that have to come together here um, to, to synthesize an ADC that's safe. That's our most important thing when we're asking for regulatory submission, and that's efficacious. Um, you know, it needs to do the job. Um, if we want our regulator to, to approve our, our drug, um, we need to prove that it's um, being effective and killing the target cells. Hello, and welcome to X Talk Spotlight, illuminating insights from subject matter experts and industry thought leaders. I'm Sonia Hunt. In this episode, we're asking the question, how can broadening our knowledge in bioconjugate design and development help develop better medicines to treat oncology and beyond? The number of U.S. Food and Drug Administration approved antibody drug conjugates, or ADCs, has grown exponentially in the last five years. However, there is still room for improvement in efficacy and in reducing toxic side effects. Drug developers are looking at novel formats such as pro-body drug conjugates, bispecific ADCs, and dual payload ADCs to maximize their therapeutic potential. In this X Talk Spotlight edition, I sat down with Dr. Petra Dieterich, Senior Vice President and Scientific Leader at Abzina, to discuss this important topic. Dr. Dieterich has more than three decades of experience working in drug development and leading projects for biotech companies in the development of active pharmaceutical ingredients for both clinical trials and commercial use. Thank you for taking the time in the Spotlight interview, Dr. Dietrich. Yeah, thank you very much for inviting me. And I'm really excited to be here and to chat to you today. So to start us off, when synthesizing an ADC, what different elements do you need to consider? ADCs are complicated molecules. Um, we all know that they have different elements. So um, there's protein part, um, there's a small molecule, and then there's the, the linker part in the middle. Um, so standard um, ADCs would be built on an IgG1 um, monoclonal antibody. Um, and we have to really think about them to, that that's very tumor specific. We want to be targeting receptors that are specific um, to tumor cells. We want our antibody to have um, a long half-life in circulation. And we want it really to be retained in the circulation um, so it's not eliminated. Um, once um, the antibody has found the right receptor, we need it to be internalized into the cell so that the payload can, can do its job and doing the killing of that, that tumor cell. Um, and we really need to make sure that um, antibody doesn't generate any unwanted immune responses. So that's, that's the protein part. Um, obviously, on the, on the other end, we have to have a very highly potent um, payload. We have to have a small molecule um, that, that is going to do the destruction of our tumor cell. Um, and we need to think quite carefully about um, the mechanism of action. So different payloads have, have different mechanisms of action, but they're all highly toxic um, and they need to be really highly potent. And um, we, we tend to want our payload to be hydrophobic enough. Um, so if there is an opportunity to elucidate the bystander effect, it can diffuse um, into neighboring cancer cells and, and um, kill those for us as well. Um, of course, we have to bring those two elements together. Um, so the linker and the conjugation um, chemistry is, is really, really important. Um, the chemistry that we use really defines the structure of our final AD ADC and how the, um, the loading of that antibody antibody to drug ratio looks, um, the linkers can, can have different properties. They can be cleavable or non-cleavable. And in the marketed ADCs that we have um, today, that both of those um, elements feature. And the linker um, chemistry really also determines the physiochemical properties. Um, they have to be stable in circulation. We don't want to get any shedding um, of, of that payload because that, that can have some quite toxic effects um, and also um, affect our potency. So yeah, really um, three really key elements that have to come together here um, to, to synthesize an ADC that's safe. That's our most important thing when we're asking for regulatory submission and that's efficacious. Um, you know, it needs to do the job. 
um, if we want our regulator to, to approve our, our drug, um, we need to prove that it's um, being effective in killing the target cells that, that we're, that we're um, targeting. And what are some key shortcomings that drug developers working in the ADC space have identified? Shortcomings are really related to drug resistance and adverse effects. Traditionally, we've thought of ADCs as widening the therapeutic index. So we're looking at um, increasing the maximum tolerated dose and um, going down in the minimum effective dose. Um, In reality, clinical trials have shown us indeed that ADCs are very effective. If we take NHER2, and HER2 is the poster child uh, amongst ADCs right now. It's got pan-tumor potential, um, and it's it's really um, been extremely successful in combating uh, breast cancer, metastatic breast cancer. Um, response rates in clinical trials are up to 75%. Um, but even there, we're seeing um, some significant issues um, with interstitial lung disease um, in about 9% of patients. Um, and, you know, disappointingly, um, the treatment has to be disrupted for those patients. Um, so there's more we can do um, to, to stop these adverse effects and, and really make sure that um, we keep those cancer treatments going. So drug resistance is really the, the root of this. Um, and it's brought about by tumor heterogeneity um, and the different responses um, to treat to treatment are brought about by the different strains in, in the cancer having different responses to the to the uh, to the um, to the ADCs um, and really that that leads to resistant strains and then treatment stops working very sadly um, and and really that that's a key key problem. Adverse events are really when um, the toxicities become unacceptable and um, treatment has to be discontinued. Um, and really that's that's then alternative um, treatments have to be found or discontinued completely. Um, Myelotarb, for instance, was um, approved for leukemia in the year 2000, but it led to a far too high number of early deaths and had to be discontinued. Um, since then, more data has been found. We've established different treatment regimens, and under a lower dose, we can now um, we can now um, are authorized to to reuse that. That's been since 2017, and under that dose, it's been reinstated as a, as a treatment. Um, we've spoken about in her two as well. So there's really a lot more um, that we can do, and really what we're looking at is to to change the formats um, and further um, elaborate on what we've got already um, to make sure that we retain that efficacy and to make sure our drugs are safe. Now, what solutions are being considered to overcome these shortcomings? When we target a a cancer um, cell, what we want to be doing is looking for a receptor that's unique to that cell um, and obviously less expressed in a, a healthy cell so that the healthy cells still stay healthy. Um, however, very often those receptors aren't unique to the cancer cells. They do appear in other cells. Um, and so um, when that happens, um, you can get the ADC payload entering the healthy cells, and then you get what we call this on-target off-tumor effect, um, which, which can lead to, to unfortunately destruction of those healthy cells, and then some some quite um, devastating effects. And what, what people are really looking at now is um, something that we call pro-bodies. So in the ADC, um, the AGG1 antibody molecule would contain a masking unit. So we would mask the antigen binding site, um, or we could also alter the confirmation so that we don't get binding straight away um, to those receptors. And then it's only in the tumor micro environment where we're really getting um, that that binding um, to happen. And so we can be much more specific and exclusive to the cancer cells. Um, One company that has made some great strides in in this area is um, Cytomics uh, Therapeutics. Um, they've made these pro, 
pro-body drug conjugates, um, PDCs, and they've really been able to have some great results. Um, they've increased um, the therapeutic index by about tenfold in their preclinical monkey studies. Um, and they've advanced now into clinical trials to see whether we can just have a much more effective and safe um, drug moving forward. Um, there's, there's other things we can do. Um, they're not so advanced. Um, we can look at bispecific antibodies. So in a bispecific antibody, um, you would target maybe two different receptors. Um, so if you can identify two receptors on your cancer cell, you could maybe exclude more exclusively bind in that region and then obviously internalize and uh, uh, your toxic payload and get the, the cell destruction that way. Um, there is some risk with that. Um, you can get um, agonistic effects so that you're not, not actually having the, the right targeting, but that, that is something that people are looking at. Um, another option that people are looking at is to have um, dual payloads. So um, instead of just having one single type of payload, um, we can have two different payloads. And those payloads um, would be chosen um, because they have different mechanisms of action. So the different tumors, um, the heterogeneous tumors, um, the, the, the ADC with a dual uh, payload could target um, all those different, um, different types of, of cancer cell and then get destruction. Again, it's early days for this technology. We have to be careful in looking at those mechanisms of action and, and looking um, carefully at the underlying biology that's going on there. Um, but there's a lot of activity in this field. Um, the industry has certainly come a long way and it's understanding of the chemistries involved. And um, I think we're more than capable of synthesizing these molecules. Um, what we have to be sure, I guess, is in the design so that we're really designing the best possible molecule um, to have those desired effects. And to wrap up, can any of the learnings from ADC development be applied to other therapeutic moieties, such as antibody oligoconjugates? Obviously, over the years, um, we've built a, a plethora of techniques for conjugating the different targeting proteins um, with a range of, of different payloads. So we can have a standard monoclonal antibody um, with, a, with a high potent orostatin MMAE. That, that's um, a favorite uh, payload at the time. Um, and and we, we can um, vary that and apply lots of different design options. Um, we can... Um, take that another step. So we can take um, a targeting protein like um, an antibody fragment and we can couple it with an oligonucleotide. So um, really exciting, quite a different molecule, lots completely different mode of action here for treatments, but we're still using the chemistry that we've learned from our ADC um, synthesis to apply to this new molecule um, just using the, the different elements that are available um, in our toolbox. So oligonucleotides um, really impact um, the, the protein production. So they would interfere with the expression of the protein. Um, they could destroy it, they can modify, um, or they can enhance. So if we have um, diseases that are caused um, through proteins, the oligonucleotide therapies can really impact um, at that level of the protein expression. So there's different types of oligonucleotides. Um, there's antisense oligonucleotides, small interfering RNA um, nucleotides, and these can all be synthesized now using specialist um, chemical techniques. Um, they can be stabilized and we can really use, start using them um, to, to alter the protein expressions and to really start having an impact on, on diseases that are caused um, by, by these elements. Um, oligos aren't easy to handle. Um, they're large hydrophobic molecules, 4,000 to 20,000 kilodaltons, negatively charged, um, really have limited um, bioavailability. And um, we've done some horrible things 
such as directly injecting them into eyes and injecting them into spinal cords. Um, really want to be looking at a more systemic delivery method, something that's a little bit uh, easier to handle. And, and really by conjugation has really offered itself as, as the way forward here. So um, we can go back to our ADC synthesis and we can choose very similar linkers. Um, and if we use a bifunctional linker, we can link one end to the protein um, using the standard um, techniques. So with, through cysteine or lysine conjugation to malayamides on one end of the function. And then we would probably choose um, maybe an A side um, to link through to the oligo um, to make that connection um, between the the A side um, between the oligo and the protein. So really, um, just using techniques that we already know, but applying them um, to different moieties. The other thing that I think we've learned um, from ADC molecules is that we can modify. Um, the linkers. Um, we spoke a little bit about hydrophobicity can be a good thing, can be a bad thing as well. So on the ADC side, um, we have um, the option to put um, something like a PEG molecule um, or sometimes um, a carbohydrate like a glucuronamide molecule to enhance that hydrophilicity. Um, and that's an option that we use in ADC development very frequently. Um, we can apply that to, to oligos as well. We can modify um, our linkers. Um, we can add units. We can add PEG. Obviously, um, the, the hydrophobicity isn't so much of a problem, um, but there are studies that show that if we add PEG, we can increase the half-life um, in circulation, which is something that we always want to do. So, um, yeah, just going back to those chemistries and really... Um, learning the connections that we've made and applying them in a different situation um, has, has, has really shown us the way um, to make these molecules, to, to make them um, more easily administered um, for patients. Well, thank you very much, Dr. Dietrich, for speaking with us today. We really appreciate your time and insights. It's been an absolute pleasure to, to be here today and to talk to you a little bit about ADCs and other conjugates. We look forward to learning more about Abzina's work in the antibody drug conjugate space. Thank you all for joining us for this X Talk Spotlight feature. We hope you enjoyed the discussion.